While there hasn't been a beta Steam Deck client update this week, that doesn't mean there hasn't been some awesome news going on. HDR will be coming to the Steam Deck, but what's more, ray tracing support as well. Plus, what's all this about Alienware's Nix Concept Controller, and has it convinced me that I want one? All this and more in this week's Steam Deck news. First up, our friend and Valve employee Pierre-Lou Griffet tweeted about the work being done to bring HDR to Linux. This is big news as HDR has been conspicuously absent on Linux for a while now. To put it simply, HDR is an extended color range that allows compatible displays to have brighter whites and darker blacks. HDR allows video signals to have a higher dynamic range. And that's what HDR actually stands for. In Pierre Liu's post, he mentioned that he was able to test the new HDR support in Halo Infinite, Deep Rock Galactic, and Death Stranding Director's Cut. While it's not ready for prime time yet, the fact that Valve's team are testing this here means that it should eventually make its way to the Steam Deck. But that's only when a deck is paired with the right dock and a display that actually supports HDR. However, it's not just HDR content that is going to be available on your Steam Deck. The RADV Vulkan implementation will soon advertise to games that compatible AMD graphics chips have ray tracing, or also known as RT, capability. These changes are now available to experiment with in Quake 2 RTX and Doom Eternal in the latest Mesa build. But hopefully once more shader work is completed, real-time ray tracing on AMD hardware will be a thing. And we know that the Steam Deck's custom APU has RT support, albeit limited in scope. So it'll be interesting to see when these changes roll out to Vulkan. But hold on just one second. I, I just realized that you haven't liked that smash button yet. You do realize that when you like this video, you're well on your way to seeing more news videos just like this one, right? You can also subscribe too, if that's more your speed. I mean, we recently hit 100,000 subscribers on this channel and in honor of that, I'm actually giving away a Steam Deck. There's a link up here if you wanna sign up for that. Finally, if you believe in the work that I'm doing here, you can become a Steam Deck warrior by pledging your support on Patreon or as a YouTube member. It's what keeps the wheels turning here, so thanks. And now back to the show. Humble Choice this month is actually a pretty big one, and that's not just because I'm actually interested in a few of the games, but it's also pretty friendly to the Steam Deck. This month's games include The Serpent Rogue, Hako Life, Conan Chop Chop, Grow Song of the Evertree, Ollie Ollie World, Encased, Tribes of Midgard, and Doom Eternal. Tribes of Midgard and Ali Ali World have a playable rank, and the Serpent Rogue is unknown at the moment. But the rest of the games? They're verified. Whether intentional or not on the part of Humble, the fact that nearly all the games have a playable rank or above goes to show that the Steam Deck is quickly becoming a powerhouse. Next up, if you're anything like me, you absolutely love the classic Command & Conquer games. But playing them on PC is a real headache. That's where OpenRA comes in. OpenRA is a free and open source reimagining of the early Westwood CNC games like Command & Conquer, Red Alert, and Dune 2000. You don't even need a copy of the original games since EA released them as freeware over a decade ago. Well, on December 20th, the OpenRA team released a brand new playtest with some new and welcome features. The first major improvement they added was hierarchical pathfinding, which massively increases performance on large and complex maps and their new netcode makes huge improvements to the multiplayer experience. According to their release notes, games should feel much smoother, and units feel more responsive in both low and high latency settings. They added transient text notifications, which allow you to play without sound. And the last thing I wanna highlight is the Tiberian Sun experience continues getting closer to a fully playable game. Though right now, CNC, Red Alert, and Dune 2000 are the only fully supported games, with Tiberian Sun needing more work until it's complete. With this playtest, Tiberian Sun now supports vehicles tilting on slopes. It's pretty awesome to see in my book. To try this playtest on your Steam Deck, the easiest thing to do is to download the app image playtest from openra.net. There's a link below to try it out. Make sure you mark it as executable by right-clicking on it and clicking properties, and then checking the executable button. Then just double click it and it should launch. Next up, Reddit user LuigiSauce shared what appears to be a screen capture of the settings menu in the Steam Deck client that shows a new customization tab. In this tab, you can customize the startup movie by visiting the point shop or by selecting one of the movies you've already manually installed. Hopefully this means that we'll see alternative first party boot movies for the Steam Deck soon, giving you more things to do with the Steam points that have largely gone unused by a lot of folks. Additionally, I hope that this customization tab will grow to support even more things, like being able to specify themes for game mode and other things like maybe what belongs on your home screen. Next up, Alienware. 
Dell's perennial icon of pre-built PC gaming has revealed their plans for the Nix game controller. It's an interesting spin on the Steam Deck blended with a more traditional gaming controller. While it remains the form factor of something like an Xbox Series controller, it has the dual analog layout of the DualSense and face buttons in their usual place on the right of the controller, defaced by a stereotypical gamer font. What's fascinating about this controller though is where it departs from traditional game pads. On the front, there's a touchpad called the Omnipad on the left where an Xbox controller would have its left stick. And while there are the typical bumpers, triggers, start and select buttons, there are even more interesting input choices. First, there's a fingerprint sensor where the home button usually sits. And the novelty doesn't end there. There are dual thumb scroll wheels at the bottom of the device which are touch sensitive and a light ring that appears to surround it. And around the back, there are paddle buttons that work to mode shift the other inputs on the device. The triggers and the analogs are labeled as adaptive, which apparently means that they're able to provide some level of force feedback. And it also appears to have a built-in microphone, a mute button, and what seems to be a voice assistant button. However, those go unlabeled in Dell's official graphics, so that's just speculation on my part. Gizmodo got some hands-on time with the Nix controller concept at GDC 2023, and their review seems to be a positive one. Though I do have to say that a controller that lacks a good D-pad is a non-starter for me in 2023. And the fact that they chose to put the trackpad on the left instead of the right makes me wonder what the heck it's even for. So my question is, what do you think about this concept controller? Leave me a comment below. I would love to hear from you. Next up, the Steam Deck had an interesting month in December. Despite the holiday season where you might expect to see a wave of new users thanks to Christmas gifts and the like, the Steam hardware survey told a different story. The overall market share of Linux fell by two hundredths of a percent. That's not a really big deal, honestly. I mean, referencing gaming on Linux Steam Tracker shows that there's still quite a strong growth and an upward trend when it comes to Linux market share. And perhaps new Steam Decks coming online due to the holidays will materialize in the January survey. But since we're talking about the end of 2022, let's talk about the games that Valve reported were the most played on Steam Deck last year. This is measured by the number of daily active players for each game. They are Cult of the Lamb, Red Dead Redemption 2, Multiverses, Vampire Survivors, Cyberpunk 2077, Spider-Man Remastered, Hades, No Man's Sky, Persona 5 Royal, Elden Ring, The Witcher, and Stray. Now, it's interesting to note that this list does not include games with an unknown or unsupported ranking, as specified on the notes tab. You can pick up any of these titles with the links below. But this list goes to show that the Steam Deck is truly a versatile device, and I can't wait to see what happens with this device in 2023. With all that said, thank you for being here. I make these videos to help keep you informed about what's going on in the world of the Steam Deck and Linux gaming. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and if you did, why not leave a comment and let me know your thoughts about any of the stories that we talked about today. I want to thank my patrons for their continued support. It's because of them that I've been able to build this channel into what it's become today, so thank you. If you want to become a Steam Deck warrior like these fine folks, you can use the links below to pledge your monthly support, and thanks. That's going to do it for now though. I greatly appreciate you joining me here today, and I'll see you next time.